All right, everybody. So it's right at the at the top of the hour, and we'll go ahead and get started as people start to join in. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Looking forward to a great presentation. Um, my name is Karen Hickenbotham, and I'll be moderating today on the program manager of the MSOM department. I ask you to please save all questions until the end of the presentation. Uh, we're going to ask you to be uh, to be typing those in the chat box at the end. And this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on ScholarWorks at uarc.edu in our operations management collection of the presentations. So thank you again, and let's go ahead and get started. In the College of Engineering and Industrial Engineering programs, we offer a Master of Science in Operations Management, Engineering Management, and Engineering. We have graduate certificates offered with Project Management, Lean Six Sigma, and Homeland Security. Today's presenter is Dr. Rocky Gay. He's a teaching assistant professor in the Operations Management uh, Master of Science program. Dr. Rocky Gay is teaching Operations Management and Advanced Project Management. Rocky previously held industrial engineering positions in the energy sector. Further, he led the U.S. Army Center for Accessions Research and developed initiatives increasing the Army's size by a third to meet the demands of two simultaneous wars without a draft. Military service included operational leadership roles in the Middle East and in Europe that ranged from combat actions to peacekeeping and nation building. He also taught systems engineering at West Point. He's a certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt, Scrum Master, Agile Coach, PMP, Project Management Professional, and a retired U.S. Army Colonel. So everyone, please let me welcome Dr. Rocky Gay for Agile Thinking and Innovative Technology Development Presentation. Dr. Gay, I'm going to hand it over to you. Great. Thanks, Karen. Really appreciate the, the kind introduction. And uh, I, uh, I want to apologize in advance. There may be a little uh, little clicking noise because uh, of my computer today. And, and it, if, you, if it's that way, just think of it uh, in terms of uh, like an engine, because a lot of your engineer managers or operations managers and is helping us move forward. Um, I would like to talk to you about projects and project management and then a, a piece of it that's uh, – that's been very popular and growing in popularity right now, which is Agile. And it's, it's uh, spawned a lot of innovative technical development. I think if, as, if you, of course, if you've taken 5783, you know a project has a, is anything that has a start time and an end time. And basically, everybody's a project manager one way or another because we, have, we all have start and end times and so many different things that we do. And, uh, and what I'd like to just let you know that this is a, um, you can apply what, what I'm talking about today to, to uh, almost anything you have in which you work with a, a number of people, a number of customers, and to satisfy different clients other than just yourself. So um, I hope, hope you'll find this, uh, this uh, informative today. Um, let's see. No, I'm not really sure about that. The slides here. Hey, can you advance the slide, please? There you go. Um, thank you. Uh, so, the, a lot of companies are using Agile today. In fact, uh, Gardner said uh, in a survey of, uh, in 2019, he said 85% of companies have adopted Agile to some degree or planning to adopt Agile in, in some degree out there. Um, and we ask why? Why are we doing this? And the key thing they're saying is speed to market. 32% of the folks out there say it, Agile helps you really get uh, new ideas and new products to the market fast, as well as enhance their digital business. Another 31% say, say that is, is really a key factor in uh, adopting Agile and, uh, and helping uh, move close, close to the customer which we're going to talk about a lot here because this is what the Agile really helps you do a lot with. Let's see if I go in. There we go. Um, so if, I, if you look at the, our uncertainty and complexity model that we have and different projects where they line up here, and, and if you look on the x-axis, you have we go from low uncertainty to high uncertainty, and the y-axis go from, uh, in terms of technical degree, of uncertainty. And then in terms of requirements, as you know, in projects, we always talk about requirements and they're, they're a building block of what we're, 
we talk about you go from low uncertainty and requirements to high uh, to high uncertainty, um, and you you'll find that where where you have a um, low technical uncertainty and low requirement uncertainty, those are really your simple projects, and we 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 can work in those uh, understand the, the the particular cost, the particular quality we have, and the particular schedule we have. Um, then as you move forward uh, in in terms of uncertainty, it becomes more complicated and then more complex. Uh, and the, the less linear approaches that you have are not are not as applicable, and you have to have more adaptive approaches. Of course, if it's really uh, uh, risky when you have a lot of uncertainty in terms of your requirements and a lot of uncertainty in your your technical um, degree of of, um, of uh, level of maturity, then it's really chaotic, and you really don't don't want to get into that area. So you you want to move into an area that uh, and and the area of innovation is generally a complex area. Now, where Scrum, and we'll use the term a lot, or Agile work lives mostly, is best in terms of, of this upper left on the, um, and that, that's where it, it works well with your, if you have uncertain requirements and you have to have quick uh, face, face-to-face or quick interaction with your particular customers. And that's where, uh, the sweet spot of agile is right now and it, and it, and it lives if it's a, if you have a high degree of technical uncertainty maybe it's it's not the best place to, to have agile um, but but uh, but it is where where but when you have a high degree of uncertainty of requirements it, it really does does a good job of it. so we have um, there's four generally predictive uh, life cycles that we have in a in an, uh, in projects. And, uh, and this is from from Pembok. and it, the very top one is what we're familiar with in 5783. We have very we have fixed requirements, uh, and you perform once over a lifetime of a project with uh, with a single delivery. And the goal the goal is uh, is naturally cost uh, cost schedule and time. Well, they, they say here it's cost, but that's um, that's really what often people call this the waterfall. Uh, view of projects and in our traditional way of doing things, and um, that uh, and that's what we've done in in the past for for, for many 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 years, and and continue to do so. Uh, there's a couple little uh, adjustments to that. I think um, Carrie mentioned it last time in, in iterative type projects she she was working on. They they won the uh, Edelman Award, and that's where. Where you you repeat it until it's correct in terms of the activities, but there's just one single delivery, and and your goal is is, is uh, you know the quality of that that particular solution. Incremental is is when there it can be you have frequent or more smaller uh, deliveries, and, and your goal would be speed. But if you look at the lower right here in terms of agile, you you can you typically um, you repeat what you're doing until it's cor- correct. And you focus on you do have frequent small deliveries, but it ends up being a uh, uh, you continue to add value as you move forward. And the focus of uh, of this is on uh, is on customer value, uh, repeated frequent deliveries, and and customer feedback. So with that customer feedback, you you continue to improve your your deliveries and 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 what we call a minimum viable product as we go forward. It's uh, characterized by by transparency with your customer, uh, and then your customer being able to inspect what you are delivering, and then you adapt to any particular needs that the customer has as you continually improve your particular product. Um, what I'd like to do is, Agile first came about in a Harvard Business Review paper in 1936, and 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 it's. Got there, there's a little groups of folks working on it here and there throughout the United States as they they and they begin to perfect the craft on it. The term Scrum came about uh, for the first time used in in uh, 1995, but around the uh, around the year 2000, um, two gen- two leaders in this field, Jeff Sutherland and, and, and Ken Schwaber. Uh, decided, got together with with a, a number of their about a dozen of their colleagues, and get, and 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 developed twelve 
principles of agile development. And um, if you look in PMBOK, particularly the, the agile, the 143 page agile addendum to, to, to PMBOK we have here, you see that agile uh, it comes in different shapes and sizes and varieties and interfaces with predictive project management in a number of ways. You can have a little pieces of agile with an overall arching large predictive uh, project, or you can have um, a big agile product with little pieces of, of uh, predictive project management pieces in there. Um, but what I'd like to do right now is, is go over the, these basic principles that we have of, uh, of, um, of agile and that, that were, that were found in there. And they, they really do not deviate uh, regardless of, of what you, uh, what particular area you work on. Um, the first one is, is uh, and uh, we mentioned this, and the, your highest priority is to satisfy your customer. Your biggest KPI is customer satisfaction. And that, uh, not, not necessarily what we did talk about in 5783, where it's, it's cost, make it under budget, or on time, or high quality. Well, high, although quality is definitely, uh, you're satisfying your cu uh, customer. But you, and this, this uh, you're satisfying the customer through, early and continuous delivery of these valuable products. Uh, and and that really, the customer tends to like this because it really reduces his or her risk in understanding what's being produced by this product. And it's also building trust with the, the developers or the, the project managers that you were actually being able to produce something that, that the customer may like. Number two is, is we welcome changing requirements. Going back to 5783, we did not like to change requirements. And we knew in 5783, the further down the project you went, the, when you changed the requirement, it added much more to the cost. Well, in Agile product development, they welcome changing requirements because that means the, you, your, the requirements are satisfying the customer. Now, the customer, since you're close to interface with them, he will, he will change those requirements or he or she will change those requirements based on uh, with the knowledge, though, that that he or she will carry those risks going forward and knows um, knows knows the, the particular cost and the impact of time. Uh, number three, there develop working products frequently. I think that's um, you'll you'll see as we we talk about here. We'll do, we have they have something called sprints in agile technology, which is generally two to four weeks in which you deliver a, a Product or a minimum viable product to the customer, and and the cust and you were able to review it. And I'll show you the, the framework we have in, later on, on on that, which is pretty neat. Um, and then the key thing, the and another key aspect is that we don't work in silos. Uh, the, you, the the working team and and the uh, the customer are in very good contact and. and uh, with each other, and, and it's just not like where the, the requirements were just written and thrown over the wall, and not and there wasn't any or very little interface. There's there's significant interface uh, as we go forward. Um, I think uh, although this this topic here, you have motivated individuals in in a, an environment of trust and caring is uh, is probably necessary to have to have this work. It, it will not work if there's a lack of trust. Uh, Agile will will not. Um, um, not not uh, be very effective. A major piece of, of uh, agile development is face to face conversations, and where where the team gets in a room and and works through problems and sees sees the progress going forward, and uh, and, and you know not passing messages back and forth. Uh, I. Um, although I will have to say that, that when in my situation when I've used this. Uh, it's been in a global company where I've had folks in the UK, folks in the United States, in Malaysia, and so we'd have to find out. We would have, um, and you can, you can, uh, with technology these days. And in fact, we probably we, we don't. I don't need to uh, talk about it, belabor any, that any longer with with the COVID environment we're in. But but you can you we can work in a virtual environment, and you can leave. There's techniques where you can leave your machine on all the time, and people can. Or your camera on, and you can talk uh, tw um, throughout the day. Often we would pick a time; uh, it's convenient time. For example, nine o'clock in the U.S. and and maybe 
uh, two o'clock in the uh, in the U- UK, and that would be uh, uh, a compatible time for everybody to to talk about and and to work over problems. Um, the next thing is that uh, when we have working products, when you want to, uh, when you give these minimal viable products to on your particular reviews that they are workable and they do show a uh, a measure of progress that going forward and that and again uh, the customer sees his risk reducing and and she sees that that we're we're making progress uh, across the board and then uh, this last one here we have sustainable development you. There's a, a good amount of math involved in here in that how much you can handle at a certain time for that two-week or four-week sprint. And so you only bite off what you can chew, and you have a uh, – during that time. And you want to have a sustainable, uh, even pace uh, of production and not like with a lot of peaks and valleys in there. I think that, that we find that that's – that at the end of the day, that uh, really er- erodes the ability of the team to work well. Uh, for for a, a good amount of time. Then the uh, this last group of, of uh, principles that we have is that uh, I, I think you, we just need to have good technical excellence uh, throughout out the area. And um, this in terms of simplicity, the minimum viable product is when we say minimum, that's without a lot of bells and whistles. So you you make it work to to what the customer needs to those particular areas that that uh that that he's prioritizing um interesting characteristic of, of agile is the teams are not really hierarchical like with a, with a boss and you know cracking the whip over folks to get it done they're really self-organizing they identify what um up front and i'll show you how to do this in the in the when i discuss the framework and uh, and they identify the, the particular backlog or requirements they have, and then, then organize themselves and realize what they what they can and can't do over a certain period of time, and that that gives uh, sustainable momentum and sta- sustainable trust and sustainable uh, ability to 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 work together for long periods of time. And at, at the end of the day, they um, this last one here, uh, part of the framework is they do an after action review, basically. You, you, uh, it's part of your work. Part of your framework is stopping and reflecting on what worked and what did not work, and what, what, how we communicate and how uh, we we interact with each other and how we interact external. And that's that's part of the um, part of the overall framework, and and uh, and it really helps uh, not the whole team improve as you go forward. Um, in and these gentlemen, um, uh, Sutherland and 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 Schwaber decided at four different values or characteristics of the, in their Agile manifesto. And when when there is a conflict uh, between two several different things, what has what has priority? Do we value our processes and our tools, or or the or our ability to work together with each other? So I think in this case. They value the the uh, the people and 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 a, and ability to work, particularly with the customer, rather than the process. The process may have to deviate a little bit. While you may have good process initially, um, but if there's a conflict, um, the interaction with the customer and the team takes priority. And also the focus on the product, may, uh, delivering the product, and maybe the documentation will follow later on. But if we have to, we have a conflict between the two. Uh, we want to deliver the product as quick as possible, and and op- oops, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we, um, you know, you, you, we used to say in in uh, in the project management team I had, you know, you, you can't get anything done without a contract. You have to have a contract to get to get the these projects running. But if there's a conflict there between our working with the customer and the contract, working with the customer comes first. And and then finally, I think we can all relate to this in 5783. If there's a challenge between um, changes and following a plan, Agile really wants you to uh, and recommends and encourages adopting to changes. Now, those changes have to be agreed by the by the customer, and the customer, because of that quick interaction, will will approve those changes quickly.
Okay, I mentioned Scrum earlier, and you, you, this, I don't know if you ever uh, played uh, or are familiar with this sport in rugby. Um, I did play a little bit in college, and um, it, it, it does stay, it's a, it's a nice analogy because it does take everybody leaning forward and pushing forward together to get things done and to, and to produce the highest possible value. It's, uh, it's easy to do. It doesn't, doesn't require uh, 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 a lot of uh, equipment to do it at all. You just, uh, all you need is basically uh, a phone and a whiteboard. and That's all you really need to get, get this thing done. But, um, but it's a framework on, on, uh, on how agile works. And it's, and it's, it's um, about 80% of all agile uh, uh, projects use Scrum, and so I'm going to I'm going to spend a, a good amount of time uh, walking through how this is done. Next slide, please. And so uh, it, the Scrum again helps you reduce your risk. It helps enhance transparency with the customer, building trust. And you see these little green dots here. If they are these are these iterative, minimal viable products that are being produced and getting better and better each time as you move from sprint one to sprint four and, and the like. These are uh, some of the basic principles of Scrum that we have. I've, I've talked about a number of these, um, but uh, what I, I haven't talked about is time boxing. And I'll show you how this is, is uh, portrayed in a little bit, but time boxing is that when you do something, actually everything you, you do, there's a, there's a clock attached to it. And like how long you do uh, this particular meeting, a sprint review, a backlog review, a sprint retrospective, uh, a daily scrum, everything, or, or even a sprint. There's there's a clock attached to it, and that um, that really helps develop a steady cadence as you go forward uh, within within the organization and with the team. They tend to 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 really um, the teams really tend to really respond to that and it reduces. A lot of uncertainty within the team. Um, these other items here, I think we've talked about uh, in in, uh, in good detail. The, the Scrum team consists of about three to nine people. You don't want to have over nine. You don't want to have less than three. And the key, there's really three roles here. One is the product owner, and the product owner is your is the one person who interfaces with the customer and the customer's requirements and it helps prioritize your backlog that you have backlog or your number of, of, of things that 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 uh, that needs to get done in, for for the uh, for the customer or and 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 they um, and they will share and keep the, the the customer updated on what what you're doing. Uh, then the next thing we have are cross functional members, and it's key that you when you uh, organize your team to start out with you they have all the necessary skills. To, to finish the, the job. And it doesn't work well if you don't have all those folks. And they need to become on uh, an agreement on what done means, because you're going to have to, to do these particular tasks that are aligned in the backlog. But um, you, you, there should not be an ambiguity on, on, uh, on what it means to get the thing finished or get it done. And so that they have, need to come to an agreement uh, in that particular area and, and need to work well together and get things done at the shortest amount of time. The scrum master is basically sort of a servant leader, a coach, a mentor who who uh, meets with the team daily and and helps guide them through it. And is really key. His he or she's key role is impediment reduction or, or what barriers do you have? What problems do you have? And, and how can I get rid of those for you? So that's uh, um, that's very helpful in that area. And I know even la on the last uh, meeting we had s some certified scrum masters uh, in, in our, also on our, our, our webinar. So this is where I like to spend uh, a, the most amount of time on is is the scrum framework here. And this is this is sort of your bread and butter of of what Agile does. And you know, like I said earlier, eighty percent of of Agile uses Scrum. And so if you look at your going from left to write, um, you have an idea and could become from it's probably from a customer or if you're developing yourself within your own team, you can do it from your from yourself. You have an idea of what you want to produce or what what we want to 
do, what our project wants to, to accomplish. And from there, within that project, you need to identify what, um, what particular features or sometimes the term user stories, how the user will use this particular item. And, and from that, you develop a, a backlog of different uh, requirements or, or tasks that, that need to get done in order to make these, this particular product going forward. And, and the product owner, as we mentioned earlier, is the one who manages that. And he manages uh, the, the, the list of, of those, uh, those particular items and prioritizes them from one to end. So it's lined up. So, so immediately the team knows what's, what's best for them and what they should work on first and work on last. And from, from the product backlog, then, then we have what's called a sprint planning meeting. And they, uh, what they do here is the team self-organizes and they look at, they identify what they can do in this backlog that they can be completed within a two or four week period, two or four week sprint. Sometimes you have a one week sprint, not often though, but, but mostly, most people generally like, like two week sprint, but if it's, if it's more uncertainty, they go to four. So the team says, okay, this is our goal. What in, within that time frame? again, the time box period principle we talked about, and we're going to produce, um, we're going to take, if there's a one, one to end list, well, maybe we'll take the top four tasks, one, two, three, four, and we'll work on those. And we think we can get that done within in two weeks. And they, they say, estimate the sprint backlog. And then from there, they move a little bit over to the right and they, they, uh, they, they, uh, they list these particular backlog tasks and then just start, start working on them basically um, for during that two week period with the goal to get it done and deliver a minimal viable product within that, that two week time frame. One neat characteristic is that they do a daily stand-up or daily scrum uh, each 24-hour period, and and it only lasts 15 minutes. Again, time boxed, and within that within that 15-minute period, um, they they review what was done in the last 24 hours, and then they look at what's going to happen in the next 24 hours. What they plan to get done, and everybody's in agreement again. It's self-organized. The scrum master participates in this uh, for the most most part, and then identifies any obstacles. And obstacles, the team will, will address those obstacles, and then she, the scrum master, will go out and try to to, to uh, uh, stop those if it's uh, find those obstacles, whether it's gathering information or talking to the customer or, or working with the product owner. Anyway, those. Those obstacles will will be delivered as quick as possible, and that speeds up uh, the ability to produce. And this happens repeatedly, you know, every every 24 hours to a daily scrum throughout that that basically one to four week period, generally two weeks. And then at the end of that time, we have a sprint review, and a sprint review lasts about four hours. And it uh, what it entails is that you give a prototype or a demonstration of what you what you have produced to the um, to the customer in, in a face to face type environment, or it can be virtual as, as a lot of things are these days. And 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 the customer gives feedback on what what's good about it, what can be improved, and what they, and uh, where to go from here. And and after that that period of time, and the whole team is there, the, the three to nine folks that are there, as well as the product owner and, and the scrum master. After that's done, they, we have that after action review. It's a, a retrospective called sprint retrospective. It's three hours, and and uh, you 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 look at what you, what was done, and we how the team is working together, and how we're communicating with each other, and then how we can improve on that, and then then you go back. Uh, and the, you go back to where we have here, and you, like uh, you see this on the bottom left, the stack of bricks. You take your second brick out, and um, a second from the top, and then start working on that sprint. And then you start sprint two, and um, and, and and move forward from there. It's uh, it it adds the framework is it's a, it's very consistent, and it gives a lot of standardization. 
while the products change, the people change, the technology changes, the geography changes, the industry changes, this doesn't change. And so, uh, and so it, it, you're, and it's, you, it, the key things, the cool things I like about it is that <clears throat> the customer interface, the quick ability to produce uh, a product, and the quick feedback. And, and, uh, and it, it, it really gives, that's why a lot of these companies like the time to market aspect of this, this particular uh, methodology of working here. In that um, daily scrum, and I hope uh, many of y'all may have heard of a, a Kanban board, uh, but in case you haven't, now you have, okay? So a uh, uh, Kanban board is, is basically uh, in, used in the daily scrum often. In which you, on, you see on the upper, the, the left column here, where we rank the back, uh, you have rank backlogs and basically from one to end of, of items that, that need to get done. And then you show as, as, as the, the week sprint progresses, you, you move these little yellow stickies across to show what has been done. It's a visual tracking system, very simple. Um, a lot of, a lot of, you, you can do this electronic. I know Salesforce has a, has this automa automated, so to speak, so for everybody to see it. But uh, you can show what's in progress, show what you need, need it, what an item for risk mitigation, what things that are stuck, and things that, that are that have already been done. So it, it shows, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. Another tool that's used is called a burn down chart. I have it down here at the bottom here. And if you look at, if you look on your top of your y axis, these if you item number from from one to n, n being your very top of all the things that you need to get done as as you progress down through time along the x-axis you can see the the amount of things that that are, are dropping off so from an aggregate picture it's nice for, uh, to show everybody on the team that hey we're knocking things off and we're making progress and and you can make a particular sloped line here to show <laughs> the rate of change you want to have or uh or the the rate of, of, of work you're doing throughout the uh, throughout uh, progress. Agile is is a part of Lean. This is from Pembok. This this particular chart here, and and as you it makes sense because you're reducing a lot of waste, your um, of, of uh, lack of communication with the customer or lack of knowledge of the requirements, um, and Agile Agile makes you closer and closer work work with it with the customer in many ways and. Uh, so it, it is a nice uh, a nice piece of lean going through. There are other techniques in here. You see uh, Scrum, and these are other types of, uh, of of techniques in Agile that uh, that are out there. But um, and, and as well as Kanban, Kanban can be used outside of Agile also. We did there was a survey done uh, last year, and and this done an annual survey. So we'll probably get it here in the spring. And when we asked. Uh, a lot of the companies out there, um, how does Agile help them? And you see uh, their uh, their ability, the, the top one here is 70% says ability to manage changing priorities. Um, as other areas where they have, is it helps with project visibility. And that, uh, I think the customers really like that, as, as well as the team members do too. Um, and and that's, that goes hand in hand with business alignment. And then you see uh, delivery and speed to market is also uh, on top top of there right right now, and um, it really really helps helps team productivity and risk reduction. And and since you're you're self organizing, uh, it helps team morale in many ways because it's steady and you, you don't like to have uh, ebbs and flows of, of work in there. Okay, and then uh, final chart. Next, please. So. The uh, challenges you have <clears throat> is uh, is not not everybody has adopted agile and and in different different teams, different people, different industries are out there and they they may not be f familiar with it and and they and some folks are resistant to change and and that's not uncommon. I, I've seen it myself and uh, and until they actually do it and see the benefit of it, they they um they they may not not uh not grasp it uh it is it, it you do need to have leadership help and leadership uh approval to, to to do it if you don't if there's leadership's resistant to it and they're not going to 
um, uh, I guess, sequester or, or um, guarantee or, 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 have, uh, or, or have people help out and, and form scrum teams, then simply just it, it won't be able to work. So, so um, it, it, you do need to have leadership involvement going through, through there. And, um, and it, does, it, it is helpful if you are consistent in what you do. Uh, going out there, I know they're they're. Uh, I, I think what I've told you today, these basic principles I've had, uh, I, I articulated, and the uh, in the Scrum framework I, I articulated, those things should be are sacrosanct. They should chase. They should be um, not changed from 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 industry or from or from different personalities or or different. Uh, um, different geographies and so forth. Those those principles and frameworks should say the same, regardless of, of uh, what types of projects you're working on. When you have to do uh, when you're developing projects in this way. Okay, I think uh, uh, that's that's it. Do I have any any questions out there? Be happy to entertain. So yeah, Rocky, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, that was very informative. Uh, we will have um, Rocky's going to stick around. We're going to have a Q&A with Rocky, we ask you to utilize the chat um, box for this session to type in your uh, questions for Rocky. And while everybody kind of gathers their questions and kind of thinks about um, kind of what they want to ask or any follow-up questions or maybe how this um, information particularly, uh, you know, impacts you professionally or how it could, um, start thinking about those kind of questions. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to just do a quick um, info on the Master of Science and Operations Management program. We are 100% online, um, or we do have selective live courses. It is uh, for domestic students. It is in-state tuition for everyone. There's a total of 10 graduate courses in the program, equaling 30 hours, but there are going to be four prerequisite classes that could be required depending on your past undergraduate uh, coursework, which will be evaluated individually. Uh, we start uh, five eight-week sessions per year, so we don't start at the beginning of semesters, which is nice. We, you can pair the master's with a graduate certificate with no extra hours required. Um, the GRE and GMAT uh, test are, scores are, are, they are required. Um, if you have below a 3.0, uh, but I'll get to a special um, announcement about that. But if you have a 3.0 undergraduate for your bachelor's degree, um, there is no GRE or GMAT required. The total program cost is going to be anywhere between 10 to 15,000, kind of depending on uh, those prereqs that I just mentioned, depending on how much uh, you're going to need those. At the beginning of the presentation, I did mention that we have three graduate certificates. They are standalone or can be paired with the Master of Science. We have one in project management, uh, which uh, Rocky was uh, nice enough to do the presentation on Agile. And the project management certificate is designed to provide skills to become better project managers and to prepare for the PMP certification. Also, if you're interested in the PMP certification, uh, Rocky could probably answer some questions about that as well. Um, the Lean Six Sigma is learning how to eliminate problems and remo remove waste and reduce variation to improve operations. And then we have the Homeland Security Certificate, which is designed for industry and safety professionals to learn how to mitigate risk. Those graduate certificates, there's only four classes to each certificate. You can obtain it as part of your master's degree without taking any extra classes. Uh, you only have to have a 2.5 undergraduate GPA required for admission with no GRE or GMAT scores required. These classes will double count both in the certificate um, across uh, several or across the certificates and then also in the Master of Science program. They can also be completed as standalone and it also is a way to transition into the MSOM program um, with no GRE. And so if you're just kind of wanting to try out a class or just think you're interested in just project management, but then once you get in that certificate, a lot of students go, hey, you know what? I'm really enjoying this and it's really helping me professionally and even personally. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and transfer into the, to the Master of Science program. And that, that does happen um, often. So I mentioned that there's a special announcement for the GRE uh, due to COVID-19 effective for spring, summer and fall 2021 terms at this time, we are waiving the GRE for the applicants with a 2.5 to 2.99 undergraduate GPA. Uh, those with above a 3.0, that's still automatically waived for any term. But once the GRE testing centers resume full operations and go back to normal, the standard admission requirements will go back into full effect for our program and the graduate school at U of A. 
Okay, well, let's go ahead and get to the chat section of this. And if Rusty, Rusty, excuse me, Rocky is standing by, uh, Bryce asks, uh, do you have any recommendations getting buy-in from leadership on agile approach? As you know, DOD organizations are resistant to change. Where will these, okay, so we'll answer that first one and then I'll answer the second question follow-up. So Rocky, um, do you, have any insight on Bryce's question? Oh, thank you, Bryce, for, for that question. And I'm very familiar with DOD uh, organizations. And uh, I I can't help but think, like, for example, you if you have a project you're working on, uh, just the interface with the customer would would, uh, would, would just automatically like um, your, your, your leadership would like to have it. But it, it but if it's new. And it's not familiar to people, and, and they that you're right, they may not like it. Uh, I think the best way to do is is just to um, is is to give examples of, of what how it's been used in similar organizations. I um, I know I know so I just give a, a little example is I know in the army they um, they were rec recently working on um, they're trying to, to to improve their artillery systems and. And so they asked a, a bunch of uh, uh, folks to go out there and see see what they can do to to look at their um, to improve our artillery systems out there. And, and they and they they uh, they brought a, a few innovative companies, new startups, and uh, and and, uh, and then and they and when they first understood what the what the client's problem was, and in more and more detail, they they um, they went back and and. Uh, Came up with some ideas and interfaced with them more and more. For example, an automatic loader. They have these big 100-pound uh, rounds that that our guys are having to, to shove in through cannon cannons, and they've been doing it since the Civil War and uh, Napoleon, and uh, and and we're still doing it today. And our guys said, "Well, why don't we, you know, let's come up with a, a robotic arm and and put that together and and use it." And so through and initially, the people were not. Uh, wait a minute. We've never done that before. And, and but after after a couple of iterations of showing, hey, you know, here's the design, here's a prototype, and um, here's here's what we can do. It, it's um, it was, it was able to uh, able to get implemented, and and actually in this case much faster than the uh, the defense. Uh, you know, the five defense primes were you know Boeing and Lockheed Martin, and those guys are, had a much more difficult time. Uh, Doing it because they, they they maybe not not apply agile and they're and they're the only thing ways to do it is, is other guys do. Um, oh, good. Yeah, look at Rich. Uh, Rich had a, a nice uh, comment on that too. DoD and and uh, DHS have been doing it in recently. Okay. And that that sounds like actually what I did was maybe a little example of that too. Right. Great, thank you. Thanks, Bryce. Yeah, and the second follow-up question, um, these slides will be posted, which I was going to get to in the next screen, but I encourage everybody to, you know, um, if you have any questions, but um, the um, the slides will be posted um, and sent out to all participants that registered for this webinar. So those uh, emails will go out sometime um, tonight or tomorrow. I'm having a little connectivity issue since we're having a bit of a ice event here in Northwest Arkansas. So I'm hoping to get all that finalized tonight, but at the latest tomorrow, I promise. So, um, and thank you, Rich, for that. And, you know, are there any other questions or comments for, for Rocky here today? Well, we can always um, do any sort of follow up if you have any questions, but I'd like to uh, thank Rocky for all of his work and uh, the presentation and, and your time today. I know it's precious. Um, I'd like to let everybody know that our next webinar is March 10th. Um, it's with Phil Jones. He's presenting on benefits realization management. Uh, so look forward uh, to um, emails to register for that. But we want to thank you for attending. And if you have any uh, questions uh, for us about our flexible degree program or follow up questions on the presentation you just had or any other presentations that we have posted, you can email me um, or visit operations-management.uark.edu. Uh, thanks everybody for joining and again registered participants will receive an email with a link to the webinar and we hope to see you online next month. Thank you everyone.